Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy, happy afternoon. Hope well, hope you well. Um, yeah, just sort of a more of an update around what today looks like. We've got obviously this video that you're watching me in. I know, shocking. Uh, it should have at least one more later on, um, as well as obviously I have already released one earlier, which is a bit of a different one, more of a um, injury update, you know, bit of a, more of a in-depth surrounding of what investment would have been under the Qataris as well. So go have a little, little watch of that if you um, if you haven't seen it. This one is surrounding centre-halves. I think I think it's the most important thing, if I'm honest. I'm not going to be speaking about the midfields or attack in this video. That will come in another video later. And so, we, yeah, we have an update around uh, Spurs' obviously interest in Lloyd Kelly is what you see on the thumbnail, but obviously what... Bournemouth stances on Lloyd Kelly, and it might not be good for our January transfer moves. Uh, and we do also have an update around long-standing interest in a couple of other Premier League players. So plenty to get into. Just want to say, if you're new, hit me the subscribe. Do us a favour. Love that. And we're going to jump in. And this came from Gary Jacob, and he said that uh, Tottenham have retained an interest in signing Lloyd Kelly after Bournemouth rejected an offer for 25-year-old centre-back in the summer. However, Bournemouth have shown that they are willing to let players leave as free agents if necessary, and his deal expires this summer. <clears throat> so, a couple of things that I was thinking about on this. Uh, one is, obviously, Bournemouth probably going to value guaranteeing survival from the Premier League than they would over 15 to 20 million for Lloyd Kelly, right? Survival in the Premier League to going down is worth hundreds of millions of pounds. So you can kind of weigh up one to the other. A part of me also thinks, because they don't have a ton of power in this situation, because in January, Spurs can literally offer Lloyd Kelly a contract, he agrees, boom, it's done. In the summer, he becomes a Spurs player, right? And they obviously look at it and go, God, you know, we're not going to be able to sign to a new contract. But we're going to put the pressure on, knowing Spurs is a centre-half situation, we're going to put pressure on to say, yeah, you can sign him for in the summer, but you need you pretty much need him now, though, don't you? And it's how we react to that news to say, actually, we do need him now. How do we get Bournemouth to come to the negotiations table, right? So there's a few things in there that are moving parts to kind of think about. And then I did also think about... Let's say we did sign Lloyd Kelly on a on a like a pre agent or pre contract agreement for the summer of twenty four. Spurs obviously then won't rule out the fact that we'll, we'll sign someone in the summer. This is how this is this is probably how Levy would work it. I've signed someone in the summer, bosh, that's going to look really good because then I can be like, oh, I've signed someone for the I've signed someone already in the summer, buys them some goodwill. I'm going to get maybe that Castres. Maybe if I get Castres in January, maybe. That will just buy me enough because he's nice and cheap. And we say, oh, we did get a defender and we've got another one coming. I can see that and potentially now. I'm, I'm starting to see my own wheels turn in my head. And I'm thinking maybe that's what it is. That Lloyd Kelly, free free agent signing in the summer. Sebastian Castres now. Oh, we've signed. We've sorted everything. I don't know. A part of me also thinks that maybe even a loan deal for a centre half might be what, what might be on the cards. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe it's Koki as well as um, as well as Sebastian Castro. I don't know. Interesting one though. Talking around the interest in other Premier League centre halves. So obviously, yes, we've got Lloyd Kelly at Bournemouth that we know that we're interested in. This was actually in the article around Todibo, the video that I released yesterday uh, around Spurs now being in the mix to sign Jean Claire Todibo from Nice. In the same article. Other than me seeing there's an advert for a super drug Christmas gift guide. I don't know if you needed to know that. That might be crucial. That might be more important than what I'm about to say. If it is, you're welcome. Shout out me. Uh, it said that Spurs also have a long-standing interest in Bournemouth's Lloyd Kelly. While Crystal Palace's Mark Gway, not shocking. And Everton's Jared Brant Branthway, or Branthway, depending on if you're a southerner or a northerner. Uh, are possible alternative targets. So yeah, we know about Mark Gway. We do know Mark Gway. Mark Gway. He's probably going to cost about three times what Bournemouth would want in January, right? Spurs don't have that kind of funds to play around with. You can kind of you put two and two together, right? On Jared Branth Branthwaite or Branthwaite or however you want to say it, I'm just going to call it Jared. Young player, done really well at Everton, by the way. And Everton had a real 
excuse me, Everton have had a real turnaround in form and coincides with having a good defence again. It's not a bad shout. A part of me does think, you know, yeah, he probably fits that timeline of a little bit younger, works and learns from Romero, works and learns with, with, I mean with, because he's not going to learn as much from a Mickey van der Ven as he would Romero, but to sort of learn with a, a van der Ven or, or a Lloyd Kelly, it's not a bad shout. And for me, you know, if you had a back back four centre-half pairings, if you had your Mickey van der Ven, you had your Romero, you had a Lloyd Kelly and a Branthwaite, that's not too bad, if I'm honest. Or a Lloyd Kelly and maybe someone else similar in that realm. I don't hate that whatsoever. <sighs> we'll have to see. But yeah, I mean, look, we, we, we know come towards the end of this coming month, December, we'll probably, have, or even to the early new year, we will have Phillips back. We know Romero's back after this weekend coming. We know he's back because the suspension will be up. We know Mickey van der Ven's probably going to be mid-January into February when he's back. It's important that we need to get someone in for centre-half now uh, in this coming window because I think we are very short there. We're picking up a suspension and two injuries all in the space of a few weeks of one another. So yes, on the face of things, you have your four. That's great. But in theory, I think nowadays in football, you actually need five. And maybe you look at it and go, got Mickey, you got Romero. We get Lloyd Kelly, we get one more, Ashley Phillips, there's your five. Because you might look at it and go, we've got four fit. Phillips can go get a youth under 23 game. Cool, he, he's still playing a bit of football. Oh, we've got an injury. All right, get to get Phillips back into the squad. You could do it like that, maybe, I don't know. But I've got a feeling that maybe Lloyd Kelly for the summer with one more in January might be the move that they're, they're thinking about. Because I think they're looking at at least one in defence, at least one in midfield, maybe one in attack. I have an update around some things other than defenders coming up in another video. But anyway, guys, hope you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section below about Lloyd Kelly and Bournemouth stance on him. What do you think about all that? Obviously, you've got the information about Jared Branthwaite and obviously Mark Way. Do you see anything that any of that coming to any fruition? You let me know. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, in the video, I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.